living holy, living lowly, for a better cattle stall. Oxen lowing, little knowing, Christ the babe is Lord of all. Swift on winging, angels singing, Noel's ringing, tidings bringing. Christ the babe is Lord of all. Christ the babe is Lord of all. Flocks are sleeping, shepherds keeping, vigil till the morning new. Saw the glory, heard the story, tidings of a gospel true. Thus rejoicing, free from sorrow, praises voicing, greet the morrow. Christ the babe was born for you. Christ the babe was born for you. It's a beautiful little hymn. 261, Away in a Manger. Away in a manger, no crib for a bed. The little Lord Jesus lay down his sweet head. The stars in the bright sky looked down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus asleep on the bed. The cattle are lowing, the baby awakes. The little Lord Jesus, no crying he makes. I love thee, Lord Jesus, look down from the sky and stay by my side until morning is nigh. Be near me, Lord Jesus, I ask thee to stay close by me forever and love me, I pray. Bless all the dear children in thy tender care and fit us for heaven to live with thee there. And that beautiful name of Jesus, number 266. I know of a name, a beautiful name, the angels brought down to earth. They whispered it low one night long ago to a maiden of lowly birth. That beautiful name, that beautiful name, from sin has power to free us. That beautiful name, that wonderful name, that matchless name is Jesus. I know of a name, a beautiful name, that unto a babe was given. The stars glittered bright throughout that glad night to an angel's praise God in heaven. That beautiful name, that beautiful name from sin has power to free us. That beautiful name, that wonderful name, that matchless name is Jesus. The one of that name my Savior became, my Savior of Calvary. My sins nailed him there, my burdens to bear. He suffered all this for me. That beautiful name, that beautiful name, from sin has power to free us. That beautiful name, that wonderful name, that matchless name is Jesus. I love that blessed name, that wonderful name, made 
higher than all of heaven. T'was whispered, I know, in my heart long ago, to Jesus my life I've given. That beautiful name, that beautiful name, from sin has power to free us. That beautiful name, that wonderful name, that matchless name is Jesus. 281. The world nowadays is asking, and we need to be ready to give an answer when they ask what child is this. What child is this who lay to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping? Whom angels greet with anthem sweet while shepherds watch our keeping. This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him law, the babe, the son of Mary. Why lies he in such mean a state where ox and ass are feeding? Good Christian fear for sinners here, the silent word is pleading. This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Taste, taste to bring him love, the babe, the son of Mary. So bring him incense, gold, and myrrh, come peasant king to own him. The king of kings salvation brings, let loving hearts enthrone him. This is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him, Lord, the babe, the son of Mary. Our last congregation hymn, 267 wonderful Christmas hymns we sing today. Day, the old familiar carols play, and wild and sweet the words repeat of peace on earth, good will to men. And thought how as the day had come, the belfries of all Christendom had rolled along the unbroken song of peace on earth, good will to men. And in despair I bowed my head, there is no peace on earth, I said, for hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, good will to men. Then peal the bells more loud and deep, God is not dead, nor doth he sleep. The wrong shall fail, the right prevail, with peace on earth, good will to men. Then ringing, singing on its way, the world revived from night to day. A voice, a chime, a chant sublime, a peace on earth, good will to men. We need to be those bells this Christmas that people hear, because we think that one verse that hate is strong, but God's still alive and serving I last flow to play us a special this morning. 
I didn't know if I'd have enough voice left, and I still got to preach. So, <laughs> Flo, play for us, please. <laughs> Wonderful holy night that was. Today, Psalms 111. Psalms 111. Two young newlyweds were preparing to enjoy their first Christmas dinner together in their new house. The wife was preparing a wonderful baked ham, and after unwrapping the meat and setting on a cutting board, the wife chopped off both ends of the ham with a knife and tossed the ends in the garbage can. Wait a minute, said the mystified husband. Why did you do that? Why did you just cut off the ends of the ham and throw them away? She said, I don't know. Every year my father would cook this wonderful holiday ham, and that's what he always did. Maybe it helps bring out the flavor. Unsatisfied with the answer, the husband then called his father-in-law, and he said, can you tell me why you cut two ends of the ham off before you cook it? Well, said the father, I'm not really sure why. That's just the way my mother did her ham, and it was always delicious. As soon as I hung up, I called my wife's grandmother, and I said, Grandma, I have a very important question for you. Can you tell me why you cut the ends off the ham before you cook it? Oh, yes, my dear grandma said in her quiet, thin voice. I cut the ends of the ham off so it fit in my pan. You see, tradition shapes our lives. But it's important to know why we do them. Because we've always done it that way is usually what the answer is. And that doesn't provide meaning to our traditions. And they become stale and meaningless. And this time of year, Christmas time, is a time that's filled with so many traditions. I mean, how many of you have a Christmas tree? That's a great tradition. How many have decorations, stockings, wreaths, outside lights, things like that? How many of you during the holidays gather the family together, cook a special meal, watch a holiday football game? Wonderful traditions. But if we're not careful, traditions become stale and lose their meaning, and they begin to misguide us. Christmas is full of traditions. So much so that some of these traditions actually squeeze Jesus out of his own birthday party. We get so busy decorating our homes that we forget why we decorate. Why do you decorate? Do you know why you decorate your house? All those decorations, what are they for? Do they draw us closer to Christ? We get so busy shopping, we feel so much pressure to buy the perfect gift once again that we lose our joy, we lose our patience, we lose the sense of Christ at Christmas. We get tied up in crowded stores, we get angry and frustrated with the people in the traffic, and we get so wrapped up in the things of Christmas, I gotta buy this, I gotta buy that, I, I want this, I, I want that, that we forget this simple little baby born in a stable. You know, the problem with the world today is that the biggest tradition at Christmas is self-centeredness. Christmas is all about us. 
It's all about me. That's what Christmas has become. Christmas has become so secular that Christ is not even included in most people's Christmas this year. If you want to have a great Christmas, you need to look at what the angels did the night Christ was born. It's in the New Testament we read that there was suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with an angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace and goodwill to men. We need to praise God. We need to focus on God. If you want to have a great Christmas, you need to look at what the shepherds did after the angels announced the birth. What did they do? They went and they sought out this baby in the manger. And then they went back to their regular life. It says they returned to their works glorified and praising God. And if we're not careful, this Christmas will become all about us and not about Christ. Christmas has become about shopping and eating and sporting events and, and giving and receiving of material possessions that we usually can't afford to give or we usually get stuff we really don't need to receive. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with these traditions. I love them. I love to eat Christmas dinner. It's almost as good as Thanksgiving. I, I, I love the tree. I love the decorations. I love the gifts. I love the lives. But if we're not careful, it can be so dangerous. Traditions of Christmas are only good if the reason we do them is to focus on Christ. Because the praise and adoration of Christ is what Christmas is truly all about. Of course, life's not about us at all. It's about God. And we can learn that truth no more than now at Christmas time. Because Christmas is all about Christ. And that's shown not even any more than how we praise God. And this is what Psalms 111 is all about. Praising the Lord. Praise Jehovah. I will praise Jehovah with all my heart in the counsel of the upright and of the congregation. The works of the Jehovah are great sought out by all those who have pleasure in them. His work is honorable and glorious, and His righteousness is standing forever. He has made His wonderful works to be remembered. He has, he has made His wonderful works to be remembered. Jehovah is gracious and full of pity. He has given food to those who fear Him. He will always be mindful of His covenant. He has shown His people the power of His works, to give to them the inheritance of the nations. The works of the hands are truth and judgment. All His commands are true. Standing fast forever and ever, they are done in truth and uprighteousness. He sent redemption to His people. He has commanded His covenant forever. Holy and awesome is His name. The fear of Jehovah is the beginning of wisdom. All practicing them have good understanding. His praise stands forever. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, may we understand what true praise is to you this morning. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You see, Christmas time is a great time to learn more about giving praise and adoration to God. And our psalm is a great text in order to learn how to give that praise and adoration to God. But notice in the first verse, where should praise start most of all? It says, Praise Jehovah. I will praise Jehovah with all my heart in the counsel of the upright and of the congregation. You know, if, if you ever have, if you have children or you had children, and can you imagine only praising your child in your heart? N never telling your child how great you are, how great they are, how wonderful it is to see what they do. N never taking your, you want to hear what, what he did today? He got an A on a test. You, you, you ought to see his play. You ought to come see and listen to him. You ought to, you know, we do it in public. We tell our family and friends how happy we are of the things that our child accomplished. If, if you're happy about your political candidate, if, if you're happy about your favorite restaurant, if you enjoy a television show, you say, what do you do? You go out and tell somebody. <coughs> Excuse me. You go out and tell somebody. You got to watch this. You got to hear what he said. You got to go there and eat. You know, praise can be quiet and intimate sometimes, but praise is most naturally expressed through a public arena. 
And it says here that Christians need to praise and adore God in public. And specifically this public place right here. In this sanctuary this morning. Praise Jehovah. I will praise Jehovah with all my heart in the upright and the council of the upright and of the congregation. We're gathered right now in the council of the upright and in the assembly right now of the congregation. Almost all of these times that the word praise appears in the book of Psalms, it's always referring to a group activity. Showing us that the church life needs to involve praising God. We cannot be what God wants us to be if we don't include praise. Christians gather together and there's a special bond of the Holy Spirit that exists here between us. And that enables us to multiply our praise to God. Now at Christmas time, people don't seem to have a problem coming to church to praise God. You know, church is full of a bunch of CEOs. You know what that is, don't you? Christmas and Easter only. <laughs> CEOs. We need to praise God at Christmas. Yes, that's wonderful. But our praise shouldn't stop right there. It should be year-round. It should carry out forward from this day. We should be re-energized every Christmas in order to praise God. We should be going out amongst the world and showing them praise for God this Christmas. Not the thing, you know, you got all your gifts bought? Isn't that what people ask you? You got your shopping done? Is everything wrapped? You all ready to go? Is Jesus in your heart? Are you prepared to celebrate His birthday? Praise Jesus in the congregation. Praise God this Christmas. The psalm also then goes on to teach us how we are to praise God. Again in verse 1. With what? All my heart. Not in a half-hearted way. You know, I think we're most susceptible at this time, Christmas time, to do that. Because of the traditional things we do, the traditional things should help us to focus on Christ. We should be doing things that focus us on Christ, yet they detract us from Christ. The decorations, the tree, the giving of gifts, the family gatherings, all these should help us center even more on Christ. But they don't. They detract us. They stress us out. They make some of us tense sometimes. So praise God with your whole heart like the psalmist did, especially at Christmas time. But we need to do that all the time. And then the psalmist goes on to list all the reasons, a wonderful list as to why we should praise God. In verse 4 he says, He has made His wonderful works to be remembered. Jehovah is gracious and full of pity. You know, Christmas is a time to remember. We got to remember all the people we got to send Christmas cards to. We got to remember all the gifts we got to buy. We got to remember, we got to put the decorations up. We got to remember this. We got to remember, we can remember all the great traditions, but don't forget to remember Christ. Because if you forget that, you've wasted the whole reason for this holiday season. God has caused His wonders to be remembered. We need to remember Christ. We need to remember His birth, His life, His death, His resurrection. Every tradition we observe at Christmas time is fine, but it should center us on praising God and remembering Christ. God has caused His wonders to remember the Lord is gracious and compassionate. If we get nothing else out of Christmas, we need to be assured that the Lord is gracious and compassionate. That's what this holiday is all about. That He loved us so much and showed so much compassion and care for us that He sent His Son. Why do we praise God? Because He's taking care of all our needs, spiritual, by grace and compassion, through our redemption, but also it says by physical in verse 5. It says, the Lord has provided food for those who fear Him. God has given us wonderful things to fill our lives. And we have all the necessities life could provide for. We also have the pleasures and luxuries in our life. And we need to make sure we're praising God for that. Unfortunately, nowadays Christmas is often so materialistic that we're too distracted to praise God for giving us these things in the first place. But there's another reason to praise God. 
We praise God for giving us what we need spiritually, not just physically. But we praise Him for something else, and it has nothing to do with us. And it's not about us at all. We praise God because He's God. And that's it. The psalmist said in verse 9 that he praises God because God is holy and the name of God is awesome. You know, praising God should not be something specific. You know, it's not, I praise God because He did these 20 things, 7 things on my list, or did these things on my list that I had. I praise God for doing these wonderful things for me today. That sounds like God's just your employer. And He's done a great job supplying you with the things that you need in life. That's not how we praise Him. You may praise God for what He's done, but the best and purest praise of all is simple praising God because He's God. Because He's holy. Because His name is wonderful. I know of a name. No other name we sing. You know, Christmas can be a terrible time of year. Stress, traveling, congested traffic, crowded stores, overspending, going into debt. But it should be a wonderful time of year. Christmas should be filled with love, joy, peace, and more than anything, the presence of Christ. Whether it's a great time of year or a lousy time of year depends on whether you're centered yourself or centered on Christ. Christmas time, a wonderful season, a wonderful time of year. Focus on the babe. But understand what he did by coming in that manger. And may Christmas be a time of praise and adoration for Christ. And don't let the things of this world that we always do at Christmas time cause us to miss out on the real meaning of Christmas. And that's what Psalms 111 is all about. It's all about being praising God for being God, period. No other reason. For everything He's done for us and everything He's going to do, but the fact that He just is God. And He's given us a life to live here on earth to share His love with other people. And that's the true joy of Christmas. And I love all the traditions. I mean, I love getting together with family. I can remember growing up when we had the manger. We couldn't put the baby Jesus in the manger. We set the manger up and everything. And then on Christmas night, you put or Christmas morning or Christmas Eve, we would put baby Jesus in the manger. So that the focus would be on him, not on anything else. And I think that was a wonderful tradition we had. And sometimes that's what maybe we have to do. We set up our manger scenes and everything, and it just becomes part of the stuff we do. And we take our focus off what Christmas is all about. And that's that little babe in the manger and what he did for us. So don't allow the things of this world to cause you to miss Christmas. Let's pray. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father. I just thank you for your message this morning. And Lord, may we learn to praise you fully and wholeheartedly and and lord just surrender our lives to you this christmas and in light of all the things that we do may we make sure that no one misses out on the fact that we're not celebrating christmas because of everything that we get and everything we give and and the lights and and which is all wonderful things but lord that the focus is fully on you and lord it just breaks my heart sometimes that we see these wonderful christmas lights and stuck in the back is a manger scene lord you should be the focal point and may you be the focal point of our christmas this year and we pray all this in jesus name amen let's all stand sing 479 softly and tenderly <laughs> Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. See on the portals, He's waiting and watching, watching for you and for me. Come home, come home.
fiercely, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling, O oh sinner, come home. Wonderful song, Come Home for Christmas. Isn't that right? Jesus say, Come home for Christmas. I'm going to give you all a great big hug right here. I'm going to stay away from you this morning just in case. Uh, thank you all for being here this morning. I just hope you're blessed. Pete, would you dismiss us, please? Oh, business meeting. Pete, pray for the business meeting. We'll go into business meeting.